Um, I think it's probably when it first opened, because I know that Army and Navy stores opened across North America after World War One, when they had a surplus of uh, equipment and clothing from the war. And uh, next one is the market crashes, 1929, unemployment and suicide, the nightmare begins. I don't know if anyone jumped off buildings in Vancouver, but um, I know that there was a lot of de um, depression in that time. Um, I, can, I don't know too much about that, but I'm going to talk about James. And um, I met him a few years ago when he um, was one of the winners um, in the Open Shadows Photography Contest. Um, not just once, but I think four or five times at least, and he got at least one photo into the calendar. And um, over the years when you, when when we have these winners, we meet, meet them every year and um, interview them about their lives and, their, and, their, and how they feel about the photos. And so I got to know James through that. And, uh, and you know, I, I considered him a really good friend. You, you know, you meet all sorts of people um, in, in, in uh, Vancouver when you're working with Open Shadows. And James is somebody who I'll never forget. Okay, thanks. Um, James identified with the uh, hobo lifestyle because he rode the boxcars himself as a young man back in the 60s when he would run out of money from his last job on the Great Lakes or wherever and needed to get back east to find himself another ship to work on. He was essentially in the same position as this fellow um, during the Depression back in the 30s. At that time, companies hired armed guards to protect the proper, their property from trespassers, and there were cases where poor, unknown, and desperate drifters were brutally killed for daring to use this free means of moving around to go wherever they thought they could find some paying work. My father was one of those men. As an orphan teenager, he traveled from Montreal as far as Vernon, BC, and back, working at whatever odd jobs he could find. Oh, the other one? Okay, late. Okay. Uh, this red-bearded figure in the front is guess who? <laughs> um, uh, the life of the hobo, as difficult as it was, did contain an element of adventure and the freedom of the road, as well as um, the camaraderie born of sharing hard times and the satisfaction of having sustained such, uh, survived such harsh conditions. My name's uh, Claire Haxel. Um, this is 1933, Hard Times. The land blows away on the prairies and a migration to pick apples in British Columbia begins. Um, I met James probably about a year ago, I guess, at the Life Skills Center when he was working on the painting. And he had this tall ladder. And he'd climb up and take a look. <laughs> and then climb back down and walk over and add something and come back and climb back up. And I used to think, holy moly, this is going to take some time. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't realize it took eight years, so um, I guess it did take a long time. Uh, but James was really lovely, and I know he was greatly missed. Thank you. Vancouver is a really uh, amazing militant time period after the stock market crash and there is an amazing amount of organizing happening here in BC and Vancouver that impacted uh, national uh, scale politics. Uh, this is the strike at the Carnegie 1935. Stri strikers camped out on the roof of the Carnegie Centre. Food was hauled up by them in, in baskets. There's a very famous black and white uh, photograph that you can find in the libraries, the archives of the basket being raised from family members and supporters up to the, the strikers. This one is a March on Ottawa, 1935. Police riots in Regina. Uh, there was uh, uh, 17 casualties uh, during that time. 
i didn't know james very well, but had met him on numerous occasions over the years. and just last week had the honor of seeing his work unrolled on the the floor of the life skills center. and it was just ah amazing the amount of time and effort and dedication that went up to this. so it's a real honor to be here with you. thank you. hi, my name is sharon kravitz. um i'm not completely sure why i'm reading this one other than the fact that i helped with the swastikas. but um i'll i'll read and i'll just tell a short story about james hitler in nineteen thirty nine he screamed war and the door to hell opened oh yeah that's right i've got two more to go so i have a little break and i'll be back but it's really good oh no this is greg from the college festival yeah i'll be back i'll tell you Bushido, 1941, code of the samurai, you do not surrender. To surrender is unacceptable. You save the last bullet for yourself. One suitcase, 1942. The Japanese were rounded up and sent to internment camps such as Kazlo in the interior of BC for the duration of the war. No boats, no property were allowed, only what you could fit into a suitcase. My name is Greg Masuda. And um, someone mentioned I'm with the Powell Street Festival and also the downtown east side neighborhood house, and I've also helped out with Open Shadows a little bit. Uh, I've never met James, but I can appreciate this panel that he's done. I'm a third generation Japanese Canadian, and uh, my grandparents immigrated to Canada in the 1920s. Had six children who were all born in Canada, and um, in 1942, all of their property was confiscated, never to be returned, along with 22,000 other Japanese Canadians. And um, they went to work in the sugar beet fields in southern Alberta. And I returned to Vancouver a few years ago, and um, and uh, that's my story. So, thank you.